where, like I just said a minute ago, where um, computer is still booting up, so we don't have Mathematica available right now because somebody didn't log off before. It says it's working on updates. I don't know why it has to do updates. It's 18%, 19% complete now. So I have no idea if Mathematica will be available at any point during the lecture today. I'm hoping so because I do have some things I want to show you on it. But for the moment, we'll wait on this and we'll start lecture without Mathematica. We'll go the traditional route. In lecture A, I want to talk about um, more about probability and random variables, these lifetime random variables that we talked about last class period, and introduce the idea of a mean and a median, which are numbers that are measures of central tendencies. If you've had some statistics before, you know about means and medians for data sets. But we're going to do means and medians for random variables, continuous random variables that have probability density functions, PDFs, and cumulative distribution functions, CDFs. Like usual, I'm not really going to explain why the formulas work. I'm saving that for next week, Monday and Wednesday, to get into explaining why the formulas work more. But we're just going to make use of them and see that they do make some sense within the application. By the way, we will also be starting to review next week for our first regular exam, which is going to be about, what, uh, thir um, 10 days from now or so? Monday, today's September 30th, I think it's October 10th. Monday, October 10th, I think, is our first exam. We have class Monday and Wednesday next week. We actually have Friday off, so you get a long weekend to study, right? To study up for that first exam, which is a, it's a you know, we've done a lot of topics in here. We've done a lot of different integral methods. We've done a lot of different applications. I will want to start reviewing for that, reviewing what we've done, reminding you about things and what to expect in lectures next week as well. Okay? In lecture B, we're going to go back into geometry, do more with volumes, and also talk about distance travel uh, and some areas in what are called the coordinates too. Okay, so um, so we're given. And that black marker does not work. What else will not work today? Um, let's see. No other black markers. I should throw this one away, but I probably miss the moment. Do not pick a black marker. We're given, as typical, a continuous random variable. I'm going to think about the same setting as last lecture, a continuous lifetime <coughs> random variable. which represents an amount of time. And as a lifetime, it's the life of a person or a, a refrigerator or a microwave or a car or something like that. How long will this thing or person go on until they fail, which for a person would be dying? Call it capital T. Its values are going to be greater than or equal to zero, which makes it a little easier to deal with because we will be integrating for positive values of t and we won't have to worry about improper integrals that go to minus infinity for this kind of thing. You might be interested in not only probabilities related to this thing, but also averages. Like, how long on average does somebody live in a certain model? Our goal, our goals, is to find one the mean of the random variable and the median. These are two measures of central tendency. Is what we say. Measures of central tendency. And like I said, I'm not really going to explain the formula, at least for the mean, not, not a whole lot. That's going to be reserved for next week when we also talk about something called center of mass. I can probably explain the median one a little bit. We're just going to make use of them and, and get some intuition about what's going on with them. The formula for the mean mean of t, also called the expected value of t. You should know that that's a synonym for this. Involves an integral. 
And again, since t is greater than or equal to 0, we can start our integral at 0 instead of minus infinity. Integral from 0 to infinity, although in some situations you don't actually use an infinity here. Like with uniform distributions, it's only non-zero for a finite amount of time. And in fact, for the straight line distribution we did the other day, it would also be for a finite amount of time. So it's not always an infinity here, but in general you might have to do an infinity. You integrate t times f of t. Let's use this formula for our examples from last time. So the first example, actually the first two examples, or was it even the first well, three? Only? Mm -hmm. um, so if you're taking the mean of capital T, why is T lowercase in the integral? Right. Capital T, like I mentioned last time, is the name of the random variable itself. It's the quantity that represents how long this baby's going to live when they're born. Little t just represents time going by in a sense. Okay. Thank you. Good question. So let's consider our examples from last time, and at least the first two of which were we were only going to live to age 100. We weren't allowing people who live past age 100 in our model. So there was the uniform distribution. F of t, by the way, I forgot to mention, is the PDF still. This is the PDF. That's a better blue marker. PDF right there of the random variable. For the uniform distribution where t goes between 0 and 100, you wanted the area to be 1. The height had to be 1 over 100. That was the formula. What is the mean? You've got to integrate from 0 to infinity, but you, this is only non-zero up to 100, so we can actually just go 0 to 100. t times f of t, we're going to integrate t over 100. Before we actually do this integral, let's try to guess what it's going to be. Okay. If a mean and a median are supposed to be measures of central tendency, probably, since the uniform distribution is so symmetric, the mean should be in the middle. If it, if it really is supposed to be a measure of central tendency, and we're in a uniform, symmetric kind of distribution over 0 to 100, the mean should be halfway between 0 and 100. It should be 50. This should be 50. Let's see if it is. Integrate it. I hope I don't make a mistake, and this does come out to be 50. Get t squared over 200 going from 0 to 100. We're going to get 100 squared over 200. I'm feeling good. This is 10,000 uh, 10, over 200. That indeed is 50. You can check it out in your calculator if you don't. Okay, so that is the mean. It's the average. It's, if, you, if you did simulations with this model, like on Mathematica, I think maybe next Monday we will do a lot of simulations. I won't type the code. I'll have it pre-type. We'll do a lot of simulations. And you've got a bunch of data from this model. Because it's uniformly distributed, you'd expect the points to be evenly spread, so to speak, density approximately constant over the entire interval. And the mean would be the average of those. Add them up and divide by how many there are. Probably those points would be close to an average of 50 because of the symmetry. And that's what this is saying you should expect. With data, there's random variability would cause probably the mean to not exactly be 50, but it should be close. And the more data you have, probably the closer the mean, the average of those points should be to 50. What about the median? The median is also a um, measure of central tendency. Here we're after a median time. What should I call it? Maybe I'll call it um, 
I think the book calls it capital T, but that would mix it up with a random variable. I'll call it T sub med for median. The median of a data set, if you've taken some statistics, maybe even if you haven't taken stats, something like eighth grade, you learned that if you put the numbers in order from least to greatest, including numbers that occur more than once, and you find the middle number, that's the median. Actually, there's only one middle number if the number of data values is odd. If it's even, like 100 data values, there would be two middle numbers, so to speak, a 50th and a 51st one. You'd average those to find the median of all of them. With continuous random variables, you're after the time, in this case, since it's a time variable, where half the area is to the left of the median and half the area is to the right, the area kind of taking place of the number of data values. With a uniform distribution, we should also be 50 for here, too. But in general, you have to solve the following equation. When does the probability from 0 to t in this kind of situation, I'm calling it t med, equal 0.5, because 0.5 would be half the area. Solve this for t med. t med has nothing to do with medicine. It's the median time, my abbreviation for that. So once again, use the PDF. Do this integral in terms of t med. We're integrating 1 over 100 now. Not 1 over 100 times t. We get t over 100 when we do the integral. This simplifies to t med over 100. We set this equal to a half. Multiply both sides by 100, t med is going to be 50. So with a uniform distribution, both the mean and the median are the same, and they're both in the middle, which is expected because of the symmetry. So with the uniform distribution, if that measured lifetime is probably not for people, but maybe for light bulbs. And maybe if, if it's light bulbs, the units would be up for time and not be years, but they'd be weeks. And all light bulbs must fail by 100 weeks, which is about two years. You've got a bunch of data. You should expect the average of those data and the median to both be close to 50. In real life, this was an accurate model. All right, on to the next model. The linear model with a positive slope that we thought would be probably a bit more accurate for lifetimes of people. Going out to 100 with a positive slope, we still wanted the area to be 1, so this ended up being 1 50th, which is bigger than 1 over 100, twice as big. I did write the formula for the uh, line incorrectly initially last time. I will not write it incorrectly today. F of t is t over 5,000 for t going between 0 and 100. That is the PDF. Integrating that gives you probabilities. Let's find the mean in this situation. Think about it intuitively first. Think of it in terms of the simulation. If you use this for a simulation to simulate data, because the density is higher over here, for any given interval of length 1, say, you're going to expect more data points in an interval closer to 100 than you will close to 0. More people who are newborn babies will die when they are older than when they are younger. So, since most of the data is going to be close to 100 compared to 0, you should expect the average of those data values to be closer to 100 than it is to 0. The mean should be bigger than 50 this case. But it shouldn't be bigger than 100. It should be between 50 and 100. Let's see what it is. 
I have to integrate t times f of t. t times this thing is going to be t squared over 5,000. That's t times f of t. So integrating that's going to give t cubed over 15,000, evaluated from 0 to 100. We get 100 cubed over 15,000. 100 cubed, I hope you know, is a million. Mm -hmm. So how do we get from t over 5,000 to t squared over 5,000? t cubed over? T over, I multiplied by t. That was the formula for the mean. You were talking about getting from here to here? Yeah. yeah. 100 cubed is a million. A million over 15,000, that'd be the same as 1,000 over 15. Let's see, what would that be? In the ballpark of uh, 60 something? Which makes some sense. You want to do it for me? I should be able to do this in my head. 66? 66.67? Is that right? Hey, yeah. 66. Point six repeating, about 66.7 years would be the mean. Bigger than 50, less than 100. Yeah, that's probably right. Looks like we haven't made a mistake. If you know some statistics, you know that the mean is more affected by outliers than the median is. This distribution here, hmm, I better be careful. You might say this is skewed left if you're taking some stats. Sort of the center of the data is more up in the higher values. It's, I mean, it's not really a typical kind of graph that you consider in stats for a histogram or something. You might say it's skew left. So I'm thinking since the mean is more affected by outliers than the median is, the outliers are coming to the left here. I'm thinking the mean is going to be smaller than the median, but I'm not going to guarantee it. It could be wrong. So I'm thinking the median is probably going to be bigger than this, but I'm not sure. Once again, solve this equation for T med, which stands for the median time. Same kind of equation to solve to find the median. Here we're integrating f of t, not, not t times f of t. So here we will have a t over 5,000 in the integral. Integrate from 0 to the median time that we try to solve for the PDF itself t over 5,000. This gives t squared over 10,000, evaluated from the 0 to the median time. The median time squared over 10,000 should equal 1 half, 0.5. Multiply both sides by 10,000, and then take a square root. The median time should be the positive square root of 5,000. And that should be 70%. 70. 70.71. 70.71. 70 years. I was right my intuition. The mean is a bit smaller than the median. Mm -hmm. Do you know to set the median, the, the integral equal to 0.5? That's the definition of what the median is. So it's the moment in time when, for the PDF, half the area is to the left of it okay. and half so the area is to the right. That's why I use 0.5 since the total area is equal to 1. By the way, you could solve this geometrically. You could look at the graph and say, I want to find the time when the area of this trap is right over there equals the area of that triangle. The base of the triangle would be the value of the median, and the height would be plug the median into the f of t. 
the, uh, the trapezoid over here, its base would be 100 minus the median. One height would be f of t, t mead, and the other height would be this height, which is 150. So you could solve for t median that way as well, since it's a simple geometric object. But in general, you have to do the integral. All right, our third example was exponential. Hey, it looks like the computer's ready. I'll continue going on the board for the moment, but let me just log in at least. For an exponential distribution, which is, again, more applicable to white kinds than to light kinds, what would the mean and median in that case be? So here f of t is lambda e to the negative lambda t, where lambda is a this number that's positive that affects how steeply the PDF goes down and how high it starts, but it always still has an area equal to 1, so it's always a PDF. The mean, once again, you integrate t times f of t, so we integrate this thing. This, in this case, you go to infinity. This function is defined for all values of t greater than or equal to zero. So we get improper integrals. What kind of technique are we going to need to use to do that improper integral? You should know this for the exam. You will need to do a limit because it's improper, but what other integral technique, like for the gateway, do you need? More fundamentally, integration by parts. I mean, substitution can be used after you do integration by parts. But you can also just kind of guess the answer. I think I will turn the projector on so we have a brighter board here. Does that zoom okay? And you think you can see okay? Yeah. Is that okay? Also, going to get mathematic to get past it. It stalls and manipulates here. Oh no, it's actually working. Oh, okay, never mind. Maybe it was good that the computer got rebooted. Um, so it's it's an improper integral. <clears throat> so you do need to use integration by parts. Oh, so we do need to treat it as an improper integral, but we will need to use integration by parts to help us do it. Decide on a u and a v prime. By the way, some people still need to make appointments to retake the gateway with me. They didn't pass. You got to pass by the end of the semester, which is a while away, but you, you probably want to try to pass in the next week or two. That would be good to try to do your retake soon. Um, I let u equal lambda t and v prime equal e to the negative lambda t because then u prime will be simpler and v prime is definitely possible to integrate. u prime is going to be lambda, or if you prefer, du would be lambda dt. You like doing it that way. v, when you integrate that, you're going to get negative 1 over lambda e to the negative lambda t. I did that in my head. If you feel like you need to do a substitution to help you do that, that's okay. But I hope you can get to the point where you can do that in your head. Integration by parts says u times v, product of these two. The lambdas I'll cancel, but not the minus sign. So I'll get negative e to the negative lambda t. Well, also a t in there. Okay, I'm not writing my limit sign yet. That's okay. I will. I'm going to put a zero to infinity here still. Really, that's a limit. A 
that's u times v minus the integral of v times u. The negative sign there with the minus sign there makes a plus. I can bring, well, OK, you're multiplying these. Once again, the lambdas cancel. You end up integrating e to the negative lambda t. Now let's go ahead and put limit signs in here. Limit as b goes to infinity of, OK, I could put 0 to b there with the root line still. But I'm ultimately going to be plugging in b and subtracting what I get when I plug in 0. So I will go ahead and do that right away. Negative b e to the negative lambda b minus 0. Because the t there, when you plug in 0, gives you 0. e to the 0 is 1, but the t there makes it 0 when you plug in 0. Plus, I'll go ahead and use a limit sign again. Limit as b goes to infinity. Uh, when you integrate that, you get a negative 1 over lambda, e to the negative lambda t, evaluated from 0 to b. I'll get a b, and I'll get a minus negative 1 over lambda e to the negative lambda times 0. I did that kind of a couple steps at once there as well. And it turns out here, when you take the limit, that everything goes to 0 except for that part right there. You already know this goes to 0 as b goes to infinity. <coughs> lambda itself is positive, so negative lambda is negative e to a negative power that keeps getting to be a bigger and bigger negative power goes to zero. Does the b here, is that a problem in keeping this from going to zero? No, it turns out. And this is something to just know. The limit as b goes to infinity of b to the n power times e to the negative lambda b where lambda is positive, so negative lambda is negative, that is zero no matter what n is. That's zero for any n. That would technically take proof. If you assume you can use L'Hopital's rule, that you've proven L'Hopital's rule, then you can use L'Hopital's rule to prove it, though in this situation you have to apply it n times, and you'd have to rewrite it as b to the n divided by e to the positive lambda b. It would not be super pleasant, but it can be done. Do we have a question? No? This does go to zero as b goes to infinity. The exponential decay overwhelms the growth, so to speak, of the b. This goes to zero so fast that it, in spite of the fact that b itself is getting bigger, the product is still going to zero, is the idea there. So the only thing that's non-zero is the last thing, and the two minuses make a plus. E to the zero is one, so you get one over lambda. Think about this intuitively. If lambda is large, think about the graph of this. The vertical intercept of this is lambda. If lambda is large, the graph starts way up there, and, and to make the total area equal one, it's got to go down fast like that, say this is lambda equals 10 or something, most of the data is going to be low in value. And the mean will be low in value. In fact, the mean would be 1 tenth in this case. On the flip side, if lambda is small, like 0.2, and equals 0.2, this must be the plus sign. Then the distribution starts low, and to make the whole area equal to 1, it doesn't go down so fast. And you can have relatively large data values happening. And the mean in that case, 1 over lambda, would be 1 over 0.2, would be 5. So this makes good intuitive sense. Think about it that way. Almost break time. Hang on here.
What about the median? Once again, we've got to solve this equation, putting a 1 half here now instead of 0.5, solve this equation for T med, the median value. Don't integrate T times the PDF, integrate the PDF itself. So the equation looks like this when we plug the PDF in. We're not doing an improper interval here, that's nice. Don't have to worry about limits. Do the integral. The antiderivative is negative e to the negative lambda t, evaluated from the zero to t med. I think we're going to get a logarithm involved, it looks like, right? When we plug it in, be careful about minus signs. After simplification, you're going to get 1 minus e to the negative lambda times the median value must equal a half. So e to the negative lambda times the median value We'd have to also equal one half. Take the natural log of both sides. Negative lambda times the median value would be the natural log of one half, which is the same as the opposite of the natural log of two by properties of logarithms. Divide both sides by negative lambda. The median value is the natural log of two divided by lambda, which also is small when lambda is large, like 10, and big when lambda is small, like 0.2. It's proportional, in fact, to the, the mean, the mean being 1 over lambda. It's a bit smaller than the mean, because natural log of 2 is less than 1. I think it's like 0.7 or so. I'm just wondering, on the white, on the board, um you had 1 minus e to the negative lambda times t med, and then on the line below, you just got rid of the 1. So you're talking about over here now? Yeah. What, what I just I rearranged the equation. The one? I subtracted a half from both sides, and I added e to the negative lambda times the median to both sides, and then flipped the order, right? If 1 minus something is a half, that something must be a half. Right, one minus x equals a half, x must equal a half. So it's just it's just an algebra going from here to here. Oh, yeah. Natural log of two is about 0.7. The mean is a bit bigger than the mean, which shouldn't be surprising if you know some statistics, because these exponential distributions are right skewed. The mean the mean is more affected by outliers, by large values than the mean is. Is the intuition if you know some statistics. All right, three-minute break.